Welcome to Glazed Watermelon. Really quick, we want to thank everyone for helping us reach 500 plus subscribers. We couldn't have done it without your support, your likes, comments, and shares. Those mean the world to us, and we're so excited to keep growing together as we bring you even more awesome content. So thank you, thank you so, so much. Have you seen those gaming hard drives being sold on Amazon for ridiculous prices? What if you could create your own for a fraction of the cost or even for free if you have a spare external hard drive lying around? In this episode, we're showing you how to create your own portable gaming drive using an application called Retrobat. So dust up your old hard drives and let's get to it. Retrobat is a Windows application that makes it so, so easy to configure a bunch of emulators and set up a front end using Emulation Station. To set up your portable hard drive, you are going to need an external hard drive. We recommend a one terabyte or bigger drive, especially if you want to emulate six gen or higher consoles like the PS2 and Wii that have bigger game sizes. But we think you can get away with something smaller. Again, it depends on the game sizes and quantity. A Windows PC, again, it depends on what you want to emulate, but the better equipped it is, the more games it can emulate. A copy of Retrobat. Links to the Retrobat and some affiliate links are in the description down below. Here are the steps we will follow to create this drive. First, we will show you how to format your external hard drive and install Retrobat. Next, we'll show you how to configure Retrobat. Finally, we will go over some troubleshooting steps that hopefully you won't encounter, but if you do, this might help. We begin by formatting your external hard drive on Windows. The best thing to do is to begin with a fresh hard drive, so we press the Windows key plus the letter X and select Disk Management. In Disk Management, select the external hard drive and choose Delete Volume. This is a destructive process and will erase the entire device, so be sure to have a backup beforehand. Right-click on the drive again and select New Simple Volume. Choose to assign a drive letter and click Next. On the next screen, select the file system and name the drive as desired. We chose XFAT because it can be read by other operating systems, allowing you to transfer your collection to a non-Windows system. Once that is complete, visit retrobat.org slash download and download the latest copy of Retrobat. As of this video, it is version 6.4 and it's about 1.3 gigabytes. Click on the installer, select your language, click next a couple of times and make sure to select the drive we just formatted. It will ask you to install some other dependencies like DirectX, so just make sure to install those too. Grab a coffee, relax and let it do its thing. It will take a while to complete. Step one is done. Click on the Retrobat logo on your screen and run it. It will take you to the emulation station interface. Retrobat is compatible with several controller types. We have used both Xbox and PlayStation controllers without any issues. The first thing we like to do is press start to bring up the main menu, go into sound settings and disable music front end. This is just a preference, so you can leave it on if you like. Then go back into the main menu, choose controller settings, then controller mapping, and press and hold any button to enter the configuration screen. From there, just map the buttons to the corresponding buttons on the controller. We use the select button as our hotkey button, but you can use another one if you like. There are several hotkey shortcuts. For us, the most important ones are hotkey plus start to exit a game, hotkey and south to open up RetroArch, hotkey and west to create a save state, hotkey and north to load a save state. If you want to edit a particular game's option, hold the A, X, or south button over the game. This will open up a menu where you can scrape or delete a particular game. BIOS configuration is next. BIOS is an acronym for Basic Input and Output System and holds the different instructions for the different consoles and systems to run. Retrobat has a cool application that can let you know what BIOS files are missing. Go into the Retrobat folder and click on batgui.exe, then select BIOS Checker. Click the Scan button. Any missing BIOSes will be marked with an X on the OK column. Unfortunately, most of these are proprietary, so we can't tell you where to find them on the internet. Once you get your BIOSes, place them in the folder called BIOS. Double check with the scanner tool and restart Retrobat. Next, 
we have to place your games or ROMs in the corresponding folder for each console or arcade system and restart Retrobat. You can also run Retrobat by clicking the executable file in the Retrobat folder. Now this is the time when we think you can outdo those drive sellers on the internet by limiting your selection to your favorite games of all time. These sellers fill these drives with hundreds of thousands of games. In fact, it just makes finding your favorite ones much worse. We recommend curating your collection. That way, there's a bigger chance of playing them in the long run. Not only that, it makes it easier to have a curated group of games ready to go in case you have to set up your other gaming systems. If you need a list of what file types are compatible for each console, Retrobat has a fantastic wiki page with information on each system. Link down below. Once your games are installed, we need to add that beautiful art and media. Off to scraping we go. You need to get a free account at screenscraper.fm FR, bring up the main menu, go to Scraper, Scraper Settings, and scroll all the way down to enter your username and password. Go back to the Scraper screen and choose Scrape Now to download artwork and media for your games. If you want to customize your emulation station theme, go into the main menu and go to Updates and Downloads. From here, you can download new themes and bezels. We recommend the CKAU dash book theme that looks amazing. It gives that carousel with all the cool titles scrolling by, which is very cool. All that's left is to run your games and have fun. But of course, not all is perfect in the world of retro emulation. So these are general troubleshooting tips that can help you with issues you might encounter. If a game is not loading or is not looking great, there are two things to try. First, try to get a different ROM, maybe in a different format or file type. Not all ROMs are made equal, so test another one if you're having issues. Second, change emulators. Retrobat comes with a lot of emulators built in and some have to be downloaded, but it will do so automatically for most of them. To change the emulator for a particular system, use the select button to bring up the view options menu and from there go to advanced system options. In the emulator section, choose another emulator and that might help with the issue. Now this issue is specific to the Saturn. When we ran Saturn games, they would run so quickly that it made them unplayable. Go to the Advanced System Options, Screen Sync, and select G-Sync slash FreeSync compatibility. That should make your Saturn games run at a normal speed. Some systems, like the GameCube, need some time to cache their graphics. So you might see some stuttering initially when playing the game. Give it some time, and this should go away after a while. In some instances, your games do not look as good as the original console had to offer. This is not an issue per se, but more of a graphical setting you need to enable. Once again, go into the advanced system options and choose to increase the internal resolution. It depends on how powerful your system is to adjust accordingly. And there you have it. Now you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars just to get a portable gaming hard drive. With just a couple of bucks and some elbow grease, you can have your own custom portable gaming hard drive. Plus, you can take this drive to another computer like a laptop and just get to playing without the hassle of having to reinstall Retrobat from scratch. Thank you to all our viewers and those very special people who have subscribed to our channel. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Like and subscribe and we will see you on the next one. Bye!